Hello, this is an Audacity tutorial to combine two independently recorded choral sources into a single exportable result. Uh, step one is to actually import the tracks into Audacity. You can see I have my Windows Explorer here on the right uh, and an aud open Audacity window on the left. Uh, in Mac, you would just open the Finder to find your files, uh, but otherwise it's very similar. So you can select both or however many files you have to combine and click and drag them into the Audacity window. Um, this will take some time, so I will be back in just a moment. Okay, the tracks have just finished importing, um, and you can see that Audacity has created two tracks automatically from each of the files. So now I'm going to maximize the window and we can get to work on uh, aligning the tracks. First, what we can do is go up to select our sorry view, track size, fit to width. This is a good you know, starting position and you can always see the entire waveform in the window uh, before you begin working. So step two is to align the tracks. This is probably one of the more involved steps because uh, as we'll see, not only do these files differ um, by length, but they also differ by slightly by speed, which we'll see how to correct a little bit later. Uh, so the first thing to do is go to close to the beginning of the track and find something, uh, a waveform that's easy to identify on which to align the two tracks. Uh, so how to do that is you can click um, on either of the two tracks and zoom in by holding the control or the command key and using your scroll wheel or a swipe gesture to zoom. So now I'm zooming further into the file, and I've identified this small waveform here, which I believe is the uh, trumpet tuning up to the organ, to align the two tracks, because it's, it's right before the beginning of the performance. So what I can do is I can kind of visually see that um, uh, over here, uh, this, this part of the waveform is shifted to the right. So this one uh, on the bottom here is going to need to go to the right. So up here on the top toolbar, you can see the time shift tool, which, which has the left and the right arrow. Click that, and then simply move this bottom track until it's closely visually uh, uh, underneath the one in, on top of it. So it looks just about like that. Moving back to the select tool, I'm going to go back to my small sample here, and I'm going to zoom way in. So it, the waveform here is a little bit hard to see, but you can see it does line up pretty well. So I'm going to go back to the time shift tool and make some fine-tuned adjustments here. And I'm going to even zoom in even further than this using this waveform. I can see very clearly that it's pretty dead on right now. Zooming out a little bit, I'm going to click back to my selection tool. And now I'm going to just take a listen and see if they, they sound good. I can uh, solo and mute the tracks uh, just to see if they line up with the one next to it. So let's let's listen to that and see. Okay. So that that seems pretty good to me. Okay. So now we'll, we'll zoom in uh close to the beginning of that selection and I will shift click the top track see how the uh, selector the cursor selection uh, now spans across both tracks because I shift selected and both tracks are now selected um, now what we can do is go to the edit menu clip boundaries and split what this does is create two different uh, sections within each of the tracks and since we don't need anything prior to the split we can double click and hit the delete key same here double click hit the delete key. Now I'm going to reset to my default zoom track size fit to width. Make sure where I'm rewound all the way and I can see that there's this gap here in the second track because um, while they have been aligned uh, this one started later on the bottom here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, zoom in and use the time shift tool to just bring this back to the very beginning like this. I'll zoom in a little bit more and make sure it's at the very beginning. There's a yellow line that appears. That's when you know the tracks are aligned to the zero point. So I'm going to let that go and we've 
we know that these are already going to be aligned because we split them at the exact same point. So track size, fit to width, now I can see the whole thing is nicely lined up. All the waveforms are directly on top of one another. This is a good time to save the project for the first time, so go up to File and Save Project. I'm going to call this choir.aup, and we'll let the file save. Okay, the file is now saved, and we can move on to step three, which is syncing the track speeds. Um, these were produced by two independent recording units, which is why they don't share a, a central clock. So they're not guaranteed to be exactly the same speed. Um, quartz crystals resonate at slightly different frequencies, even when they're supposed to be the same. So uh, you'll see that while the, the beginning of the tracks are synced up perfectly, if we uh, use the scroll bar here and go to the end of the tracks, um, using the selection tool to click right near the end, and we're going to zoom way in with the control scroll wheel. There we go. And you can see that there is uh, a time lag here of about this long. And you can see down at the length at end of selection, you can see that the selection is almost a second long uh, because this is a rather long file. And that's how far off the, uh, the speeds of the two tracks are. So how to correct that. So what we're going to do, uh, let's reset our view, fit to width. And we see that this uh, loft track, this second track here, needs to be lengthened. So what we do is go up to the Effect menu and go to Change Speed. Uh, this value has been pre-populated because I've used it before. Um, but you can do a little math. Uh, you should only have to do it once to determine exactly the percent difference between the two tracks. And this is going to stay largely the same uh, for the lifetime of your recording device. We've determined that the percent change needed is negative 0.007. Uh, so we're going to lengthen this bottom track by that amount uh, by lengthening, by slowing its speed down, we're lengthening the track. And let's click OK and see what happens. OK, that has just completed. So let's go back to the end of our track here and zoom in a little bit. And you can see now that this is much closer. Uh, and if we play the file, we'll see that it's perfectly in sync. Um, OK, let's play them both. Yeah. So I, I checked this prior to this, and this is um, this is uh, good enough to show that both files are perfectly in sync now. OK, moving back to the default view. I'm going to save my project again. Now, at this point, um, we can work only with selections because we've done all of the hard work to align uh, the tracks from front beginning and end. And we can essentially uh, work on a song by song basis. Now, if we want to pull out particular selections or if we want to export the entire track, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to go ahead and further and choose a, a particular song to mix down. OK, now that our tracks are perfectly aligned, uh, I'm here and I'm going to take one particular selection, which you can kind of see in the waveform right here, and continue mixing. So if we listen, this is uh, in, Dul in Dulce Ubelo. Let's listen to how the song starts. Okay, so this track starts here and it goes um, right about 23:35 or so. Uh, what you want to do is you want to zoom such that the entire piece fits on screen because uh, you are going to be selecting it like this. Now that you have the uh, piece selected, you can begin to mix it. And first, we're going to do something to normalize the volume levels, because these are not necessarily the same volume. So what we do to fix that is go up to Effect, Normalize. And you can leave the second checkbox checked that says Normalize Maximum Amplitude to negative 1 dB. This will essentially maximize the waveform levels without introducing any clipping. 
So let's do that. And there we go. Now the waveforms look a lot more similar. Uh, the peaks are, are larger on this one, which was quieter to begin with. So now we have a, a basis for determining uh, how we want them mixed. So if we make sure that the gain is set to zero on both the top and the bottom track, which they are, let's, let's hear how that sounds. Okay, and I think there's a little too much foreground, so I'm going to pull that back by about 5 dB, and I'll leave this top track alone. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. So at this point, um, after you have chosen the correct amount of gain for each track, uh, you can go up to File and Export. Uh, just a quick note before we do that though, do not move this above zero, this gain slider on either track, because we've normalized the tracks now, so they're already at about, about the maximum volume that can be sustained in this WAV file. So if you leave it, leave the one you want the loudest at zero and pull the other one down to a negative number. This is to make sure that you do not in, uh, introduce any clipping into your tracks. Okay, uh, now that we have the file mixed properly and selected, uh, aligned, and speed is correct and everything is normalized, and we have it how we want it, we can go up to File, Save Other, Export as MP3, and I will just leave it. You can change the MP3 settings here. Um, you know. More than 150 kilobits per second is, is plenty for a standard audio track. Hit save, and then it's going to ask you to enter some metadata. You can enter artist track, album, all that stuff if you want. Uh, and then when you're ready, just click OK. And then it's going to take this audio data and compress it into MP3 format for you. And then you're finished. So I will leave it there. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions on uh, Audacity tips or tricks, or you would like to see more, uh, leave a comment below. Thank you very much.